All right, so good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? So this is kind of the what's new. So this is kind of your, the best rotation, honestly, because you're going to get to learn about all this technology and everything that the RAV4 has to offer. And then you're going to get to go in and, and experience it in the crawl around. And lastly, you'll get to drive. All right, so it's the fifth generation RAV4 already. How many of you were selling Toyotas when the first gen was out? A couple of you? Yeah. No, you hate to admit it, right? Uh, it was me. Mm, yeah, I was there too, don't worry. But uh, what do you guys think about the size of the RAV? Do you think it's gotten any bigger? It does look a little bigger, doesn't it? It's, it's actually not. In fact, uh, the dimensions are really just about a, a fraction of an inch. Uh, differences, either bigger or smaller. It did get a little bit wider, but overall, it's pretty much the same overall size. We did lengthen the wheelbase and the track got a little bit wider, so we pushed the wheels out to the corner of the vehicle and you may experience uh, improved handling and ride comfort in, in the new RAV because of that, right? So, are those figures from the last model? compared to the previous model, yeah, no, not, not the first generation. Yeah, it was very different. Yeah, who would have thought that that vehicle, that first RAV4, would be the number one selling non-pickup truck in the U.S.? The right, Ooh. yeah, the sneaker, that's what it looked like. Um, so yeah, four, 427,000 RAVs we sold last year in the U.S. Now we've got a couple of firsts for Toyota here with this new RAV4. So this is the first time ever we've offered a Toyota with this new dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive system. Right? And we'll get more into that later as to what that means and, and how it works and the benefits to the customers. But the other thing you may have already seen is the digital rearview mirror. First time on any vehicle we've offered a digital rearview mirror. Uh, for certain grades of, of RAV. Now we have some first for RAV4, not necessarily a Toyota, but uh, TNGA platform, so the RAV is on an all new architecture. It's got all new powertrains. It's also gonna have a multi-terrain select, now standard on all, all wheel drive. Yeah, so that's a new feature for RAV, as well as the electronic parking brake with brake hold. And uh, you've seen that on all of our newer vehicles the last couple of years. Panoramic moonroof for the first time on RAV4. And that's only a $200 option on this vehicle. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. What other vehicles have that? Uh-oh. Ding, ding. What is it? Corolla Hatch. Corolla Hatch. Yeah, exactly. That's the only one. You said that, right? At least you're taking credit for it. So Corolla Hatch is the only other one. Usually I get somebody who'll say, oh, Avalon has it. Avalon doesn't have it actually. Only Corolla Hatch and now the 19 RAV4. 7 inch MID in the instrument cluster will be a new feature for RAV, as well as Intune 3.0 is now offered on RAV. Right, everybody's excited about that. It's overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are some uh, great features of Intune 3.0. We'll talk more about that later. But you're going to have standard safety connect on every single RAV4. So from your base LE all the way up to the limited, every single one will have the SOS button and Wi-Fi. Standard Apple CarPlay, so that's a big improvement with Intune 3.0. So for the half of the market, the iPhone users, you're gonna get the benefit of having three different navigation apps that you can run on the screen. And 19 inch alloy wheels, Qi wireless charging, even dual exhaust for the first time on a RAV4. All right, so a lot of firsts for RAV. Now we're going to talk about nine different grades here. We've got five gas and four hybrid. All right, and the grade strategy hasn't changed too much. We've got the LE and XLE. XLE Premium, right, which we'll talk about. The adventure continues, but it gets a little bit more distinct from what it was previously. And then the limited. Now on the hybrid side, you're going to have an LE, XLE, but a new grade is XSC, right? What kind of vehicle is XSE usually? Uh, well, you said what, like the SE? Yeah, it's, so it's our sport grade, right? Our sport grade is, good morning. How are you? Uh, our sport grade is just like in the Camry and Avalon lineup, the XSE, and that's gonna give you much better handling, but better looks as well, or sportier looks, right? It's only available in a hybrid grade. Right, so there will be no gas XSE. And then we've got the limited hybrid as well. So let's run through the standard equipment on each one of these grades. So your, your LE, your base grade, it's got the 2.5 liter four cylinder that we find in Camry. 
203 horsepower, it's going to get 30 miles per gallon combined, which is pretty impressive fuel economy. It's the only grade that will have steel wheels with wheel covers. It'll have the base Intune audio and a 7-inch touchscreen. It also has Apple CarPlay, Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, and Safety Connect standard. It'll have multi-terrain select and an electronic parking brake with brake hold, but it's the only model that gets the start-stop technology. All right, so this is very similar to Highlander, or it's a, really the same technology as in Highlander, and it's going to give you the ability to shut the engine off when you come to a stop, and then of course it restarts as soon as you lift off the brake pedal. That is why the LE grade will get 30 miles per gallon combined. All the other gas models will be rated at 28 combined. Right? So LE, only one with start-stop. No, no. I mean, if anything, you could say it's more wear on the starter. They but it's. Yeah, well, you know, 30 years ago, engines were a lot different. But the starter is the, really the only difference here, and it's a high-speed high starter. It's meant for this type of, of application, but it, it's not hard for the, for the engine to do that. Um, LE Hybrid. So LE Hybrid, it's going to give you a lot more performance. So 219 horsepower and 40 miles per gallon combined. It's also going to give you alloy wheels as well as dual zone climate control, and that's only going to be another $800 on top of what you would pay for the LE. All right, so that looks like a lot of value to me. Alloy wheels, dual zone climate control, 10 more miles per gallon, more. Eight speed automatic transmission? Well, in the four cylinder gas, yes. Now, our hybrids, of course, are the ECTV, ECT uh, transmission. So it's essentially the same as Highlander uh, or any of our other hybrid vehicles. Now, XLE all wheel drive. You've got 17 inch alloys, you've got the moonroof standard, you've got dual zone climate control with rear seat vents on this vehicle, blind spot with rear cross traffic alert, you've got smart key with push button start, even fog lamps, five USB ports throughout the interior, and heated side mirrors. Now you move to the hybrid XLE, it's going to give you more performance, better fuel economy, some LED projector headlights, and again, only an $800 bump for that vehicle. XLE Premium, only gas model, right? There's no hybrid version of the Premium. That gives you the eight-way power driver's seat, the 19-inch limited alloy wheels, as well as soft text, leather wrap steering wheel, and a power lift gate. And now Adventure. So Adventure is another gas-only model, and we've continued this from our previous uh, 18 RAV4. We've made it a little bit more distinct, right, looking from what it was previously, it just didn't put a sticker and some, some black so panels on it. You can, you, you can get embedded nav as well, which is a good point, but it's gonna have the dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive system. There's only two vehicles that get that, and that is the, the, the Adventure and Limited gas models only. And again, we'll talk more about that. 19-inch alloys, it'll be the only one with 3,500 pounds of towing capability. Seven-inch MID, it has the Intune Audio Plus, which gives you not only satellite radio, but it's going to give you remote connect and service connect included. Right? So it's got all the connected services, not just safety connect and Wi-Fi. You'll get remote and service connect as well. It's got exclusive adventure grade roof rails. It's also got a, a unique interior. Um, back, uh, panoramic backup camera, so two views. You get a wide view or a normal view. And downhill assist with hill start assist. Uh, XSE Hybrid, so this, this is a car that is our sport model, but it is still capable. It's got all-wheel drive with intelligence. You can take it and play in the, in the dirt, although I don't think most customers will. But it does have a capable all-wheel drive system that even in the snow, you're going to be able to get through um, whatever the customer needs. So the hybrids, just so you're aware, the hybrid RAVs won't hit your dealerships till the end of March. All right, so you've got about two months to wait before you'll start seeing those arrive. But the XSC Hybrid is going to be uh, 219 horsepower, again, 40 miles per gallon. All right, so the reason we've made the XSC Hybrid only is because it's our sport model, so we want it to have the most powerful powertrain. Right? And that is going to be the hybrid powertrain. The, <clears throat> the hybrids will not have any larger 
wheel than an 18 inch, right? So while you'll get a 19 inch on a limited or XLE premium gas, uh, 18 inch will be the largest wheel you'll get on a hybrid for fuel economy reasons. But you will get the option of a two-tone roof or a black roof, just like Camry XSC has. You'll have uh, sport tune suspension, heated soft techs. You'll also have uh, digital rear view mirror standard, although that's an option on other grades. Uh, you'll have Intune Audio Plus with the remote connect and service connect, seven inch MID and the panoramic backup camera. So it's kind of positioned between the equipment of an adventure and a limited. So it's not quite limited, but it's got a little bit more than the adventure does. So let's just, bless you. So let's just take a second to talk about hybrid uh, in general. So we have a kind of an imperative here that is very important. Uh, anybody know how many hybrid RAV4s percentage wise we sell currently? 30%. You think it's 30? Yeah. One in three? Five. You say 10? <laughs> yeah. It's roughly eight to nine percent kind of fluctuates, right? It's less than one in 10. You, uh, you, you, you were pretty close. You were, uh, you're, you. They, they accused me of being stingy with the tickets, so uh, give you one. Uh, so for 2019, our sales goal for hybrid RAV is 25%. That's one in four. So we're going from less than one in 10 to one in four. You're like, well, okay, Graves, why is that such a big deal? We'll, we'll see what we can do. No, it is very important we do it because we have to comply with certain CAFE regulation or corporate average fuel economy. And if we don't, then it jeopardizes the future of certain other vehicles like Forerunner, Sequoia, Tundra, Tacoma. All right, so without our ability to increase our hybrid RAV sales, it could impact whether certain vehicles exist in the future. Now, well, true, but that's not for light truck, that's for passenger car. So there's, there's two different ratings for cafe, one's for passenger car, one's for light truck. Hybrid RAV4 is light truck. Uh, so now, when we approach a customer who is interested in a RAV, we have to really change our mindset. And, and say to ourselves, this customer wants a hybrid. And I know you're gonna say, oh, they probably don't. Well, how do you know, right? Maybe they don't even know it exists. Maybe what's their perception of hybrids in general? Expensive, expensive right? Are they expensive? $800. Uh, what's that? Absolutely, you know, that's the number one rejection reason of hybrid vehicles right now is people still think you have to plug it in. That's a good one. You're welcome. Uh, you have to educate the customer, right? You get first, you got to let them know it exists. Secondly, you got to let them know all the benefits, and you got to tell them it's 800 bucks more. It's 10 to 12 more miles per gallon. It's got the most power of any of our engine options, right? People are always wanting, oh, do you have a bigger engine? Do you have a, a V6? No, but we have a hybrid that is just almost as powerful as a V6. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, it is. And personally, my opinion, I've driven it. Um, that would be the one I would get. I would get the XSE hybrid and hands down, I wouldn't even look at any other model. It's just, it looks sporty, it handles great, it's fast, and it gets 40 miles per gallon, right? So change the way we approach customers when we're talking about RAV. Every customer should be a hybrid customer. And, and honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't. We've got a grade for everyone. It's not like we only offer a limited hybrid. You gotta pay all the money to get it. We've got an LE hybrid. Listen, if, if we're going to sell 25% hybrid, we've got to give you at least 25% of your RAVs hybrid. So you will have inventory, I promise. We're, we sold 427,000 RAVs last year. We want to sell more than that this year, right? And so you're going to have more RAVs and up over 25% probably will be hybrid. So don't worry about inventory and getting them. We will send them to you. And if you sell more hybrid if you want to sell 30 percent please do All right we'll we'll make them limited though top of the line so this is the other one with dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive it's going to have the digital review mirror also a seven inch mid heated soft text but now the limited gets two position memory for the driver's seat intelligent clearance sonar with rear cross traffic braking will be standard but it's an option on other grades 
and then the only one to get Intune Premium, meaning that it has embedded navigation. All right, so that's the only one that gets embedded nav, but it is available on XSC and Adventure Grades as an option as well. Now the hybrid, it gets 18 inch alloys, so not 19 like the gas model, but it's gonna have the LED projector headlights, and again, that's an $800 price increase. So across the board, it's 800 bucks for a hybrid, no matter what. That's the same as last year, right? No. Well, depending on the grade, and comparably equipped, it was like 750, but you had to get an additional package on certain grades, so it wasn't 800 across the board like this. This makes it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see the, equip the equipment is the same, right? Where before, we were like, oh, it's $750, but you had to get this package to make it equivalent, and then, yeah. Now, colors, we've got a few new colors. You've probably seen some of them, the Blue Flame, Blue Print. We've got the Lunar Rock. We've got some of those vehicles on the drive for you. But we, we have two vehicles we'll, that will have a two-tone paint option. So the Adventure Grades will have what we call an Ice Edge roof, which is a white roof. And you can get that on the Lunar Rock, the uh, Magnetic Black, and the Blue Flame. All right, so those three colors. And the XSC Hybrid will have a black roof option, just like Camry XSC. And that'll be with Blizzard Pearl, Silver Sky, Magnetic Gray, and Blueprint. All right, and that's kind of what it looks like on those vehicles. So sporty look on the XSC. Adventure grade, a little more like FJ type of retro look. Now interior-wise, LE and XLE are going to have cloth interior, a unique uh, cloth interiors by grade. XLE Premium and Adventure will have soft text. Uh, they are not heated, just a warning. They don't come standard with heated seats just because they have soft text. That is part of the cold weather package. So if you've got customers that are expecting that, make sure that your inventory person is ordering them accordingly. And then the Limited will have, of course, heated soft text. Uh, and you can get the optional ventilated front seats and heated rear seats on a Limited. Right? So that'll be part of an option package as well. So the wheels, only two grades share the same wheels. Otherwise, wheels are unique by grade, so kind of easy to tell which model is which just by looking at the wheels. Limited and XLE Premium share the same wheel. Otherwise, everything else is unique. So this is the all new 2.5 liter engine that we see in Camry, right? So it's 203 horsepower. It's got the eight speed direct shift transmission. It's also gonna give you 25, 33, and 28 in all grades except which one? LE, right? LE with a start stop gives you 30 miles per gallon combined. And it's got the same multi-link rear suspension design that we would see in a Camry or an Avalon. So handling is greatly improved in this vehicle versus the previous model. Trailer sway control, also going to be standard on RAV4. Um, what other vehicles would have trailer? Tundra has it, right? Tundra Tacoma, so pickup trucks. So this is just a feature of the stability control system. Yeah. So, and I know you're thinking, well, why would you need that? I mean, some of them only tow 1,500 pounds, right? Has that trailer sway control, the LE? Yeah. So here's the thing. You, you look at a Tundra and you say, well, I'm towing like a 28-foot enclosed trailer. All right, I see I need it. But if you ever have seen vehicles towing small trailers down the road, they're very short typically. And those are the trailers that become the most unstable. You see them hopping around, moving around. And that's why we offer it now on all rafts. So even a 1,500-pound trailer or a 3,500-pound if you get an adventure, uh, you can experience that. And those size trailers typically don't have trailer brakes, so you don't have any mechanism to stabilize the trailer. This gives you that ability, and the driver doesn't have to do anything. It's an option. No, no, no. Standard. Standard, Standard. yeah. Wow. But again, Adventure Toes 3500, all the hybrids are 1750, and all the other gas models are 1500. No, 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 it doesn't have integrated brake controller. It has trailer sway control. So trailer sway control is just when the stability control system senses the trailer start to do this, it'll move the vehicle kind of side, you know, side to side. It will start applying the brakes opposite sides of the vehicle to stabilize it until it's stable. Right, so 
it, it works pretty seamlessly. I, I do believe the, the traction light will flash when it's working, but otherwise most people won't realize that it's happening. So dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive. This is a similar technology that you may find in Lexus. What about a hitch then? Well, it's a, an accessory. A hitch is an accessory. Is that you can order on the ramp? Yes. I, I, I've heard it won't be available until April, okay. but the hitch, yes, will be an accessory or PPO. Standard, yeah. something, an option. PPO, right, an option. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, if they're... If, I'm sorry? You're not going to have the hitch as a... No. Yeah, so the hitch is available soon. I mean, you could still put an aftermarket hitch on. I mean, you could put a U-Haul hitch on and still tow, right? You're working for another ticket, huh? All right. It was a good discussion, but let's cut it at that, all right? Let's, let's leave it alone now. Uh, so dynamic torque vectoring. Again, this is, uh, this is great technology. Uh, it makes the vehicle very capable. We've always had the ability on RAVs to take power from the front wheels, you know, normally 100% at the front, send up to 50% to the rear wheels. But we've never been able to shift power side to side. All right, it's only front to rear. Well, this torque vectoring rear differential will allow us to now send power across the rear axle to take power away from maybe the left wheel that may be slipping and send it over to the right wheel. However, you probably think that, well, that's great for off-road, but who takes the RAV? off-road. I mean, not too many people. Maybe on the beach or in the sand occasionally. But don't sell it as just an off-road feature. It also greatly increases your on-road handling. So when you go around a curve, the wheel on the outside turns faster than the wheel on the inside of the curve. So what this system will do is shift more torque to the wheel on the outside of the curve, and it actually helps turn the vehicle because right, if the wheels on the outside are spinning faster and have more power, it's helping you go around that turn. So you can see how the power shifts back and forth based on where the steering wheel is going. Now, if you are in the snow or some slippery road surfaces and you start to spin a tire, the same thing's going to happen. It's going to shift power appropriately to get the best traction. Right, so it is very, very capable. Um, I know last weekend we had some snow where I live and man, it, it was like zero wheel spin almost. I mean, the, the didn't even have to shovel your driveway. You could just go over anything. So it is a very capable system. Don't sell it as just an off-road feature. It is definitely for on-road handling capability as well. All right, so, but that's on adventure and limited grades only. Now another part of that system is called driveline disconnect. And this is a feature where if you're cruising down the highway, you don't need all-wheel drive. So we're gonna basically disengage the, the rear drive shaft so it's not adding any drag and that'll help improve fuel economy on the highway. Okay, so that you, you're not aware it's happening, so it's very seamless. It just disengages and re-engages as needed, but it's just something that's gonna help eke out a little bit more fuel economy on the highway. And then downhill assist control. So that's another feature of Adventure Unlimited. And you can see the button here, along with your snow button, just like Highlander. So when you want to use this, maybe you're going down a steep driveway, it's kind of icy, and, and you want some, make, make sure you're stable as you go down, not sliding sideways. So you can engage the DAC button, and that'll help descend that steep hill. What do you have to do first before it will work? How do you engage it besides pressing a button? Neutral? Not neutral. There is a specific gear selection you'll need. You'll need to put it in first gear, right? So manually shift all the way down to first or reverse. Press the DEC button, and then the thing to make it work, you can't touch the brake pedal or the gas pedal while it's working. So yeah, so you're pointed downhill, oh boy. You put it in first, press the button, and then just release the brake pedal. So it's kind of a little leap of faith. You're trusting the vehicle to help keep you at a very slow and steady speed down that hill. Right, so that's how it works. Most people don't know how it works. They may be pushing the button and they'll get an error message and like, oh, this thing doesn't work. Well, it's got to be in first gear or reverse. So you get down the hill, how do you turn it off? Well, you hit the brakes and you can just hit the DEC button. Well, hit the brakes, but it's well it, it won't work while you're touching the brake or the gas pedal, but you can still stop the vehicle on your own if you want, hit the brakes, 
turn it off and then put it in drive and go. Now multi-terrain select, again, standard on all all-wheel drive RAV4s. This is uh, going to be able to allow the driver to choose what kind of terrain you're covering and then give you the appropriate traction tools for that particular terrain. So you can see there's mud and sand, rock and dirt. Um, what's the problem with traction control sometimes when, say, you're in snow? Well, you, we shut it off because it cuts engine power so much that you can't go anywhere, right? You can actually get stuck because traction control is limiting. So the first thing you do is turn it off when you get stuck. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You can just select, say, mud and sand if it's a very slippery surface. And what it'll do, it won't kill the engine power. It's going to allow wheel spin, right? So the traction control system won't come in and stop the wheels from spinning. Now, it gives you a certain amount of wheel spin. It's just not limitless. But for soft material like mud and sand, you need a lot of wheel spin. But for rock and dirt, you want a little bit, but not as much as mud and sand, say. So it will give you a little bit less. So what I say is if you do get stuck, or you're, maybe you're driving on the beach or in the sand, maybe you'll put it in mud and sand. But then if you should get stuck, try one of these settings. If this one doesn't work, use the next one. When you get out of it, press the normal button, and then it goes back to normal traction control. Right, but a great feature for, for all all-wheel drive RAVs, and this is something that customers are probably going to ask about. Like, what's this mean, mud, sand, rock, dirt? You got to know how to explain it to them. All right, so why hybrid? I know I'm harping on hybrid and saying we got to sell all these hybrids, but it's our most powerful powertrain, right? And that's not what most people think. They think, oh, they're slow. They get good gas mileage, but they're slow. Well, it's not the case anymore. <coughs> Class leading MPG, right, for RAV hybrid, you're also going to have standard all wheel drive with our hybrids. And there's a hybrid for everyone, meaning we have a full range, LE all the way to limited, even a sport grade you can't even get in gas. No compromises. There were a few compromises on the previous RAV hybrid. What were they? You couldn't put a reverse on an all wheel drive on a front wheel drive one. Okay, well, that doesn't change. Uh, you had to get a higher trim level. Okay, higher trim level, right? It was no lock, well, there's no lock on any of them now. Right, for this new system. All right, what about the cargo area? Ah, you, had a, you had the battery, right, that took up some space in the cargo area. It's not the case anymore. The battery is now located under the rear seat so that the cargo space is the same on a gas or a hybrid. Right, and so no compromises with this car, and it's only 800 bucks more. No, still nickel metal hydride, but it is a little more compact than the previous one. But it does have the same 2.5 liter you'll get in the, in the four-cylinder gas RAV, but it's 219 horsepower, ECVT transmission, standard all-wheel drive with intelligence. And again, your fuel economy rating there, 41, 38, with a combined rating of 40, and 1,750 pounds of towing capability. Yes. Every one. 1,750. Yeah, there's no package you need. The only difference in the Adventure, just so you're aware, that makes it tow 3,500 pounds is it's got a better cooling system for the engine and transmission. It has no other differences. <coughs> and I know, why don't you put that in all of them? It wasn't my choice, right? I don't know. I would have, but. Advanced tech, so let's talk about some of the connected technologies uh, like Apple CarPlay. Uh, half of the, the market is Apple or iPhone, so for half your customers at least, they're going to have the ability to just plug their phone in to the USB port and essentially mirror all their Apple CarPlay apps up on the screen, including Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze. Right? So they'll have three different navigation options besides Scout. So uh, as of iOS 12, which launched back in last November, uh, you'll have those third-party apps like Waze and Google Maps that you can have. Now, we do have Google Assistant, not Android Auto. So Google Assistant is basically Android version of Siri, Siri Eyes Free. So that will work. And then we also have Amazon Alexa integration uh, with this vehicle. Uh, and how many of you have an Alexa device, an Echo or, yeah, okay, me too. So I love it because I come down, walk into my kitchen in the morning, getting ready for work, and I say, Alexa, Ask Toyota to start my car. Starts my car. 
Right? It's that simple. I mean, I have an app on my phone. I can take my phone out, okay, go to the app, put in the code, press the start button, but it seems like a lot of trouble, right, when I can just ask Alexa to do it. Right, so I've got this home to vehicle connectivity, but I also have vehicle to home connectivity. So if I'm, I'm in my RAV4, I've got my Alexa app running, I don't have to press any buttons. I can just say, Alexa, set the thermostat in the living room to 72 degrees. So as I'm approaching my house, I can adjust the temperature of my house. Or I can turn on lights if they're Wi-Fi enabled lights. I can play all my Amazon Prime music. I can even order things from my Amazon Prime account with my voice. I'm supposed to pick up batteries. Oh, I forgot. Alexa, order AA batteries. Right? Two days later, they show up on your front porch. So you've got all this convenience and technology. You just got to let your customers know it exists right? and how to set it up. So seven inch standard touchscreen, certain grades will have eight inch or an eight inch option. You'll have CarPlay uh, with Waze, Google Maps, Toyota Amazon Alexa, you've got Remote Connect, Safety Connect, and even an 800 watt JBL sound system. Same one that's in the Camry, so we have a JBL rep here today, Gabby. So when you're in the crawl around in your next rotation, make sure you set in that vehicle and get a proper demo of what that system's capable of. Now the digital rear view mirror. So this is uh, really cool. If you haven't seen it, the way you turn it on is you flip up that little lever in the back and it goes from a normal rear view mirror to a video screen. And it gives you an unobstructed view of what's behind you and a much wider angle than you would normally have looking through the mirror through the back window. Now this camera is located up uh, under the rear spoiler on the back door behind the glass which is great because this time of the year, you don't get like your backup camera does. It doesn't get all dirty. You'd have to go wipe it off. If it gets dirty, you just turn the rear wiper on and it cleans the glass. And then you'll have a clear view. Standard unlimited in XSC, but optional on other grades. Safety-wise, eight airbags. We've got Star Safety. We've got Safety Connect Standard. We've also got a blind spot on every grade except LE. And you're gonna have intelligent clearance sonar with rear cross traffic braking available. And TSS will be standard, again, on every single grade of RAV. So TSS 2.0, what, what really changed with 2.0? What do we improve? Okay, so we've got some like road sign assist. We've actually, uh, for pre-collision, we've increased the speed reduction capability. So on a RAV4, it's 32 miles per hour. On a Corolla hatch, it's 37 miles per hour. Uh, so if you, if you don't see there's a vehicle stop in front of you, you're distracted, it can hit the brakes and reduce your speed by 32 miles per hour. It's got low light pedestrian detection or nighttime pedestrian detection. It's got daytime bicycle detection, as well as the road sign assist, lane trace assist, which we'll talk about. It's still got lane departure alerts, it's still got auto high beams, but now we have full speed dynamic radar cruise control. All right, so full speed means what? It can stop you, right? Right down to zero. Right down to zero. Once traffic starts to move, you hit the resume button and it'll, it will uh, go ahead and start following the vehicle in front of you, right? So it's great for traffic, but I'm sure none of you have traffic in Long Island, so it's probably not that important. Yeah. So road sign assist, just the camera up on the windshield will be able to detect certain road signs like speed limit, stop, yield, and do not enter, and it will display that on your MID. Yeah, so it's great for the speed limit sign because if you didn't notice what it was, like what's the speed limit here? It's right there on your MID. Now lane trace assist, this is really cool technology, but it, it only works when the cruise control is set. So once you set the cruise, it will, as long as the camera can see the lane markers, it will try to keep you centered in the lane uh, and unlike lane departure alert, which you drift over to the side and it beeps and you go back towards the center, this will just maintain that center line. It does require you to keep your hands on the wheel. So you cannot just release the wheel and relax, right? So you've got to keep your hands on the wheel. It will give you a warning if you release the wheel. Uh, and then eventually, if you don't hold the steering wheel, it'll shut off. So some comfort and convenience things like uh, increased luggage compartment. It's got a really cool new luggage floor that's reversible and adjustable height. And when you're in the crawl around, make sure you check that out. Again, the battery for the hybrid has been relocated under the rear seat. 
You'll also have a 60-40 split folding and reclining rear seats still in the RAV. Optional 120 volt outlet with uh, an optional foot activated power rear lift gate. All right, so to operate that foot activated power rear lift gate, it's not a swiping motion with your foot, it's just a kick motion under it. So as long as you have the key in your pocket, you walk up to the back, just kick under it and it will open up. That's on just the limited on the That's an option, yeah, on limited. There is that panoramic moonroof available, and again, that's a $200 option. A bird's eye camera is an option, and even adaptive front lighting will be available on limited RAV. So S-Flow mode, anybody know what other vehicle might have S-Flow mode? Prius, right? Prius, that's right. Yeah, it's the first vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll get you in a minute. Uh, S-Flow is... Uh, S-Flow is our ability to detect where the passengers are seated in the vehicle and then adjust the airflow to those passengers. So it works when you're in auto mode. So you gotta make sure it's in auto. And then when you get in the car, it's just you as a driver, you'll see this number disappear. And it, all the airflow is going to the driver. You pick up a passenger, this number pops back up, airflow is now going to both front passengers. Pick up people in the back seat, now we've got airflow into the rear of the vehicle but I can cut off all the airflow to the rear of a vehicle. So let's say if those people in the back seat are getting hot, like, oh, we're hot, turn down the heat. Well, all you have to do is hit this button here and now all the rear vents stop getting any airflow. All right, so it's kind of a cool feature to just maximize the, the HVAC system where the passengers are seated. So the only vehicle that doesn't get this is the LE gas model because it'll have a manual AC and heat system. And one quick story about how the engineers always try to Kaizen or make our vehicles a little bit better. Uh, and check this out when you set in the, the RAV in your next rotation. So they, they found the optimal height for the armrests for the center console and the door armrests should be somewhere between 175 and 185 millimeters. And they looked at the old RAV and they're like, oh yeah, well, the center console was pretty low. Right? And they looked at other vehicles in the segment and they were all over the place. So this new RAV, you can see we've optimized the height, and for most people, it's gonna be very comfortable. So it's at the right height. You don't have one lower than the other. So make sure you check it out when you're uh, out in the crawl. All right, real quickly, Prius, all-wheel drive. Who would have thought, right? Everybody's been asking for all-wheel drive sedans. Well, now we have the Prius all-wheel drive E. So this is a, an electronic all-wheel drive system, and here's how it works. From zero to six miles an hour, you will always have power to the rear wheels, right? So it's all wheel drive from zero to six, no matter what. And it's an electric motor that powers the rear wheels, just like any of our other all wheel drive hybrids. From seven to 43 miles an hour, it will work as needed. So if you need power to the rear wheels because you're slipping or accelerating hard, you'll get power to the rear wheels. Above 43, it's just front wheel drive. Right, there is no all-wheel drive above 43. Right, now you do lose two, two miles per gallon in terms of fuel economy, so it's 50 combined on the all-wheel drive model. So here's a quick video on how it performs actually in the snow, which is probably what we're most interested in. Bless you. I won't forget. Thanks, brother.
Very dramatic. <laughs> All right. A question already. I was mentioning something about the prayers are going to be discontinued. No. Uh, <laughs> why would we bring this out if we're going to discontinue it? Yeah. Fake news. That's what it is. Fake news. Uh, we're not discontinuing the Prius. Um, uh, what do you mean? There, there is no like percentage. It's just that electric motor comes on, provides a certain amount of torque. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can still get front wheel slippage. Yeah. Uh, so the the thing about the video um, in the drag race, especially, I think what I was impressed with is that it kept up with the RAV. I mean, the, when that little drag race, the all-wheel drive RAV was, or, versus the all-wheel drive Prius, they were like neck and neck. But the other thing to consider, what's that? 43, 43 is when, that's it. And then it's front-wheel drive after that. But the, uh, the other thing, the front-wheel drive RAV, did it still go? Yeah, it did, right? I mean, it wasn't like it just got stuck and didn't didn't go anywhere. It still goes, it's just obviously not as quick as the uh, uh, the all-wheel drive version. Now, we've got an all-new grade strategy with, with Prius. So we've eliminated the numbers and the touring grades. Now it goes to our kind of conventional grade strategy, which is nice. So we've got an L Eco, we've got an LE, an XLE, and a Limited. However, you'll notice that the all-wheel drive is only available in an LE or an XLE. Well, what if my customer wants a limited? Too bad, we don't have it. Uh, it's LE or XLE. So the price increase for an LE is $1,400, for an XLE it's $1,000. Now the 19 Prius is technically a refresh, so it's got a different front end, it's got different headlights and taillights, it's got different interior uh, features, and it doesn't hit your showrooms until March. All right, so I know the video said coming in January. Yeah, uh, tech, it actually, it will be, the, the front wheel drive models will show up in, into this month. No, 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 the hybrid RAVs will be in March. Well, unless you sell out of them before then. The, so here's the thing, um, we're, as a region, we've chose to only bring in all-wheel drive Prius for the first six months of production. So you won't see L Eco, you won't see Limiteds, you'll only see all-wheel drive LE and XLE for the next six months, okay? You still have Prius Prime that was unchanged, it's not all-wheel drive, it still will be a front-wheel drive vehicle, and that will probably be the majority of our sales because that's we're mandated to sell that car and it's got all the incentives on it too yeah okay so with that said um, the the Prius though itself um, we only bring in about two to three hundred a month into the region so it's not high volume now this is going to help us probably incrementally improve sales, maybe keep some customers from defecting from Prius to get something that does offer all-wheel drive, and maybe even compete with Subaru a little bit, just some of those customers. Right, but we know it's not going to double the sales, though, with Prius. Uh, who said the Camry's all-wheel drive? Um, I doubt it. If, if that were to happen, it's unlikely the Camry would have something like this. Just saying, if. Well, I'm just not committing to anything at the moment. All right, any other questions besides all-wheel drive Camry? No? One thing, you said, let's go at 43. If they do 60, come back to 42, just go right back in all-wheel drive. If you need it. I mean, if, you're, if your tires are spinning and you need all-wheel drive, yeah, it will. Uh, Well, yes, uh, electric, just like our hybrids, you know, most of them above 45 miles an hour, the gas engine has to run. So electric motors are great with torque at low speed, but not really at high speed. So there's really no, it's not efficient enough, and it would just use too much energy to operate it at high speed. So, all right, so your next rotation is going to be out in the crawl. So gather your stuff. If you would, take your trash, throw it out on the way out the door.